Bishop Joseph Strickland joins us in a moment, but first, some news to share with you. Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore announced Monday restrictions on the ministry of retired West Virginia Bishop Michael Bransfield. The restrictions against Bransfield are the result of a months-long preliminary investigation conducted by Laurie into allegations of sexual harassment of adults and financial improprieties. Pending the assessment of the findings of the Holy See, as Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston, Laurie wrote, I have directed that Bishop Bransfield is not authorized to exercise any priestly or Episcopal ministry, either within the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston, or within the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Laurie wrote that in a March 11th press release. Laurie was appointed Apostolic Administrator of Wheeling in September, five days after Bransfield turned 75 and submitted his resignation to the Holy See. Also, Belgian Cardinal Godfried de Niels died on Wednesday at the age of 85. As the most senior Catholic prelate in Belgium, de Niels was a champion of liberal Catholicism and a prominent member of the St. Gallen group of churchmen who reportedly campaigned for Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio to become Pope at the Conclave. According to Daniel's biographer, he called the election of Francis a personal resurrection experience. The Pope invited him to participate in the 2014 and 15 family synods. Daniel's approved of legal same-sex unions as long as they were not defined as marriage. His later years were also marked by the abuse crisis. Daniel's was secretly recorded telling a man who'd been abused by his uncle, the abuser being Bishop Roger Van Geloway, that it would be better to remain silent until the bishop had retired. Here with analysis of all of this and the U.S. bishop's plan to address the sex abuse crisis at their upcoming spring meeting is the leader of the Diocese of Tyler, Texas, Bishop Joseph Strickland. Your Excellency, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you, Raymond. Now, tell me about this abuse summit in Rome as you saw it. Did this restore any credibility to the bishops in the church here in the U.S. or elsewhere? Well, um, I don't think it really accomplished that. I think it was a step, um, but really many more steps need to be taken, uh, both in the, in the universal aspects of the church and, and especially here in the United States. But it was uh, at least a positive step in the right direction. Uh, give me a sense about the cause of this crisis, which was never addressed at this summit. Was that a missed opportunity? I believe it was uh, a missed opportunity. I think the root cause, as I've seen other bishops express it, is a lack of paying attention to our moral teachings. Um, certainly uh, sexuality issues and homosexuality, other um, issues as well, but uh, we have a moral code that we believe is good news from Jesus Christ. and really not paying attention to that. And, and in many ways, the whole idea of celibacy, certainly it's not getting married, but it's much richer than that, really much more beautiful than that. It's about giving your life in, in perfect and perpetual continence is the mm -hmm. language of the church. Mm -hmm. And I, I think really looking at that and acknowledging that it's a challenging, we're all sinners, we fail in various ways, but we are challenged to, to live that as clerics in the church. And, mm -hmm. and I think to really home in on that is, is what didn't happen. Um, I, I really can't understand or explain. Uh, I wasn't there and I've just seen reports as other people have seen, but I think that is what really needs to be addressed mm -hmm. is the moral teachings of our faith and mm -hmm. how priests and bishops who should be the guides in the light of Christ instead have forgotten to live those challenging moral teachings themselves. Mm. So how can we call others to that light and yeah. to chastity if we're not living it ourselves? Cardinal Blaise Subic of Chicago outlined his updated plan for deploying metropolitan bishops to investigate bishops accused of sexual abuse or negligence. Isn't this another case of monitoring bishops, monitoring bishops? Will this work? And is this what the bishops should embrace at their meeting in the spring? Well, certainly it is 
at one element at least of bishops monitoring bishops, which certainly, uh, as we talked about on the floor of the meeting in Baltimore in November, there needs to be some fraternal correction. There needs to be an assistance to each other mm -hmm. of making sure that we're doing our best to live what our call is. But certainly, and I think there's a, an agreement that I see among many that it needs to go beyond that as well. Hmm. Certainly for the Metropolitan to have a role, but to have a clear mechanism if, if it involves the Metropolitan, which, Metropolitan, yeah. which some of these cases have, right. that McCarrick there's also law. a mechanism for oversight there. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've been very vocal in your support of Archbishop Vigano um, when he first came out with that testimony regarding McCarrick and uh, the revelations back in August. Now, you wrote a letter to your diocese, and in it you said this, let us be clear that there are still allegations, but as your shepherd, I find them to be credible. Using this standard, the response must be a thorough investigation similar to those conducted any time allegations are deemed to be credible. I do not have the authority to launch such an investigation, but I'll lend my voice in whatever way necessary to call for an investigation of that sort. Are you satisfied where this investigation of the Vigano allegations as well as the McCarrick situation, where that sits today, are you satisfied? Well, I, I couldn't say I'm satisfied. Uh, certainly, uh, dealing with the, the McCarrick issue itself um, and praying for that man to, to repent of sins and to grow in God's grace, as we're all called to. Um, but the, the McCarrick part has been dealt with, I think, satisfactorily. But there are other things there that I do believe warrant further investigation, further accountability. Mm -hmm. um, what those answers are, uh, that's what an investigation is for. But mm -hmm. I think everything I hear from the people here in the Diocese of Tyler and others that I speak to, I think there's still an expectation of more uh, accountability, further investigation mm -hmm. of even the things in that original Vigano letter. Yeah, yeah. No, there are a lot of outstanding issues that have yet to be addressed. Who knew what, when, uh, and why McCarrick was allowed to proceed up the chain of authority in the way he was, with really no no questions asked. I mean, it it does beggar belief that this this happened, and that there's still no real answers. And it seems from some in Rome they believe the fact that they've laicized him is sufficient, that that sort of ends all inquiry. But as you said, the people are clearly not satisfied at this point, uh, at least if you read my email, email box and, and, and Twitter feed. Uh, Your Excellency, I want to move on about lay accountability. There were a lot of proposals at the last bishops' conference in November that the layman should be involved in some way, either in an investigative capacity or a, as, a, as a panel, to first hear these complaints about bishops. Would you support that sort of apparatus or some lay involvement in addition to a metropolitan plan, if that's what is ultimately adopted? Yes, I, I believe that uh, lay involvement, I've said this before, but the laity are the church. We all are part of the flock of Christ. And so, yes, they need a voice and a, and a, a clear part of the, the structure, a role in dealing with these situations. They bring expertise and they bring uh, the, the voice of the lay faithful to these issues. And I think mm -hmm. part of the structure needs to include that in a very clear way. I've been pleased just even recently to see some dioceses moving ahead. And I think that's probably what will end up happening, at mm -hmm. least here in the United States, is that individual dioceses will bring in the lay voice. Uh, we had done that here in Tyler with a third party mm -hmm. um, group plus the, the, the lay advisory board that has already been there, the review board mm -hmm. that is part of the 2002 charter. But mm -hmm. looking at laity, whether professionally or simply as faithful members of the flock, they need to have a voice and they can be a great assistance to, yeah. to bring a more robust response to all of these kinds of issues as we move forward. Your Excellency, I have to bring to your attention uh, this Gallup poll that was released on Wednesday where it found that 37 percent of American Catholics say they are re-examining their faith in light of the sex abuse revelations. What would you say to them? 
Well, I saw that report as well, and I guess I would give the response of, of the gospel that we heard back in August in the midst of the, the Vigano letter controversy, mm -hmm. the gospel where Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Um, certainly the church is sinful and broken. It was when Christ was establishing it with, with apostles that weren't always as faithful as they wanted to be, as we haven't been through the ages. But we know that this is the church that Christ established. He promised that the Holy Spirit would guide this church until the end of time. We believe that. Yeah. And so that would be my response, certainly in as loving and as, as merciful a way as possible. But to walk away from the church because the, the priests and bishops are sinners and have disappointed you um, is, is not a good reason, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, we are all called to virtue and to turn away from yeah. sin. And we need those people. I, I guess yeah. my ultimate response would be, please stay with us and help us see holiness in deeper ways to remember that everything the church brings is the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel, which in itself means good news. That's been one thing that's troubled me throughout these months is you don't hear enough of a reminder that Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose to share the good news, the best news humanity has ever heard. And so I would say now to any Catholic watching who's kind of on the fence, mm -hmm. yes, the church is broken and sinful, but it's also holy. Mm -hmm. Stay with the church. Help it be holier. Believe that growing in your own holiness will help all of us to be better sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. I can tell you as a priest for almost 34 years, the laity inspire me constantly mm -hmm. to examine my conscience more faithfully to be closer to the sacraments, to really refocus on the wonder that we celebrate at the Eucharistic altar at every Mass, mm. the real presence of Jesus Christ. So I would ask any Catholics that are disheartened to stay with us and help us make the church the holy place that God's will is that it should be for all humanity mm. to know the light of Christ. Bishop Joseph Strickland, a great place to end. Thank you for your time. We'll be checking in with you in the days ahead. Thanks, Raymond.